In a world where pocket knives are restricted. And yet it's not in his top three. Only three may remain from your collection. I'm more interested in what I just <laughs> got under that napkin than... And to make things harder, you must rank your top choices. Just all of my knives are contenders. <laughs> These are the trials of the knives. We don't need bigger knife. Bigger. All right, so we're <laughs> here tonight for our first official episode of the Pokey Factor. New channel has been started up, and this is the kickoff of it. We are here with Kloss covering all our selection of our top three pocket knives. If we could only have three knives for the rest of time, these would be the three pocket knives that we had. That's Nigel, by the way, speaking. Oh, yes. <laughs> this is Dennis. And Joseph. And Paul. So, yeah, what's everyone's EDC for the day? Well, since I wasn't here for the last two videos, I guess I'll start. You better start. <laughs> Catch up already. Yeah, a little bit worn. A little Hiko folder, uh, long discontinued from Rock Creek, a division of, oh, wow, drawing like a cast knives? Hanway. Yeah, cast Iberia, Hanway. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So that was the main folder for today. L6 Bainite in this, differentially tempered. That's that's a sweet little blade, oh, man. Was it L6 or was it H, uh, was it their own... Um, their own brand of steel. The when HWS2? I, no, no, no. These ones were in L6 yeah. Bay Knight. Totally cool. Yeah, yeah, very cool, like on those ones, yeah. Because the HWS would spark and, or wouldn't spark. Mm. And these ones and these do, glow hey. like a light when you put them on a belt. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Very cool. Rocking little blade. Yeah, no, um, two blades, so it's a little bit unusual as far as the folder is concerned. No lock. Um, the only friction lock that I own with detent balls on leaf springs. So there is actually a bit of resistance before it closes or opens. So definitely a little bit unusual in my collection. Yeah. That's where I'm like, only blade we're playing for show and tell? Or... Well, I could show you the fixed blade. Um, Paul's got the same one, just with orange scales, but the uh, Ruick, or Rake, however you want to pronounce it, the, uh, the Hornet. A little fixed blade with 14C, 28N Sandvik steel. Um, been super impressed with this guy lately as far as like a round the city daily carry. It's it's just been fantastic. Uh, that all you, you played for show and tell? Or I know Joe has like he can pull it. Uh, yeah, you know, we can play this game for a while. For the stuff that's normally carried, you know what? Why not? I'm gonna include the Claris and I'm gonna include the Leatherman. So Claris, this is an older model, the ST two C. Um, eight hundred lumen flashlight, three different modes. Or sorry, no, four. There's the SOS mode as well. Uh, then there's the Leatherman Skeletal CX, which just awesome little backup blade in 154CM. Totally covered in dust. And I am going to correct you on that. That's six modes. It's got four brightness settings, SOS, and stroke. Oh, wow. I didn't only think four. Yeah, you're That's right. It's all good. It's nope, all good. Nope, I the math, the math works out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, Joe um, carrying a plethora of stuff tonight. Yeah. Yeah. That's what he tends to do. Yeah, we asked him to downsize for the video because he had way more knives than this on it, and it would take all freaking day just to carry what he carries on an everyday basis. But yeah, I wasn't even including flashlights up until. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> I was just showing off knives. But Paul, what are you rocking tonight, man? Um, Let's clear the board of this crap. <laughs> be gone with you. Yeah. I'll get out of the way. Um, tonight, all I've They're got. Still coming. It's, he's still. <laughs> we just can't get rid of all of Joe's knives. Tonight I have the Rook or Rake or however you want to pronounce it, uh, Usar in uh, 14C28 Sandvik, and the uh, H&K Access in D2. Fantastic. Best bench made in a while that I've seen discontinued, man. Like it's 100%. You know, that kind of shocked me when they got rid of the, uh, the H&K knives. The whole division, they ended up uh, getting rid of it, just like they did the red section, or the red glass, rather. But, again, super solid. I mean... Not a lot of benchmates are going to have super solid D2, G10, nice and solid access lock. 
super smooth action. Like, the knife that I would almost compare this to would almost be uh, something like my Benchmade Atomass. Mm -hmm. The Atomass is definitely overkill, but I, I thought this was such a cool little addition to Benchmade's lineup. I was really sad to see it go. It's a very, or it was a very nice tanky option for sure. And, yes. And price point cheaper than a striker and better steel than what the strikers were. I mean, now they upgraded to the S30, but I mean. Yeah, and um, when they were out at the same time, you had the 154 strikers and you had the D2 strikers. Which one are you gonna pick? Like it's yeah. not calling it a D2 striker, but it's kind yeah. of a D2 striker. <laughs> right? Essentially, well, yeah, more or less. Although I do really like those the awful handed hand yeah. curves. Like it's I'm nice. kind of kicking myself for not grabbing at least the mini, which you've got in your collection. Right? I do own the mini in my collection. It'll come out to play one of these weeks yeah. for sure. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Nigel, what are you rocking right. tonight? So for my EDC today is the Benchmade Cricket River and S30V. It is a very nice knife and actually fits my hands very nicely, which is why it's one of my favorite carries for sure. And yet it's not in his top three. No, no, it is or not, not in my top three. Or not or anything else. No, it which is throwing blows, these guys for a loop. It blows my mind. <laughs> what the, the hell? mind boggles. That's this knife. Is not underneath this curtain. <laughs> yeah. Like we pull this curtain back, and you don't know what you got. And there's four knives that aren't this knife. Yeah. <laughs> Dennis here has the nicest knives out of all of us. I think we could pretty much agree on that. Yeah. But I'm more interested in what knives he's got <laughs> under that napkin than, like. Okay, in in my own knife snobbery's defense, <laughs> all of you have at least one, if not two, contenders sitting underneath yes. these curtains as well. Yeah. It's just. All of my knives are contenders. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's fair. That's, that's fair. Okay, yeah. Sorry. Right. Blows me away. Blows yeah, me yes. Away. Now that we covered that, this is not one of my top choices here. What's Dennis carrying today? I am carrying also not a top choice, although right now the 20 CV that Benchmade is doing with their Griptilians is rocking my world, man. Like, it is it's, nice. Yeah. Look at the polish it takes. Yeah, and the polish is unbelievable. Um... The, this Griptilian, I don't know if we can catch that in the light. We can catch that in the light. Keep twisting it some. Yeah. It is nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> she, she polishes just as good, if not better, than M390. I definitely have a little bit of a crush on it right now, for sure. I have to say, between the, the S30 and the S blank series of steels and stuff like 20CV M390, there's some interesting pros and cons, some give and take with the polish of, of edge that you can get with steels like this that I think that that's part of why they're so popular these days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The the nice snobbery kicks in, and for the guys who don't mind pulling out the wicked edge and the KMEs and the things like that, you can do things. And this is all hand sharp, and I don't use a system. I just do everything by hand. But did you put a uh, deep carry clip on that, or did it come with it? It came. Nice. All the new G10 ones are coming with deep carry nice. clips. They really did improve the Griptilian lineup quite a bit for these guys, didn't they? And I do have one more quick show and tell for what I'm carrying mm -hmm. tonight. I've got the Carbon Fiber Pub on me. Very specifically the Carbon Fiber Pub. Because I'm pretty sure underneath some of these napkins is we've got some Dimitri Sinkovich designs. <laughs> Very and likely. I didn't want possible. to feel left out tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Not having a Dimitri Sinkovich design. And that is my only Dimitri Sinkovich design. <laughs> So I love the pubs. They're just so They're cool. so much fun. I got the quick tab. They're a slip joint, but this little now, tab here keeps your thumb in place. It's a rocking little blade. Come to think of it, that also has the same sort of tab I was talking about before with that detent ball in order to hold it in place like the, the Higo. Yeah. Like the yeah. Higo. Very similar. Yeah, it's even yeah. got like a similar kind of uh, carpenter's lock on it. So Yeah, and like we were talking yeah. about earlier yeah. as well with the Higo. Yeah. And I think that might actually be one of my... Only Sinkovich designs as well. I've, I've got the carbon fiber one as well. Dennis, you've got all three. the variations. I got all three. <laughs> Until they pumps. inevitably yeah. come out with an OD green, I think you've got them all. Um, and I will own that one too. And I've thought about even custom ordering or ordering a custom Sinkovich. The FCK knife is what he calls them. Really? And they're damn okay. steel and titanium and they're a little they pricey. Pretty. But it, for nerds that like the cool little. It's but the damn steel. Next it, level of It would be a worthy upgrade, I think. Yeah. All right. Indeed. All right. Let's so, get this gravy train going. Yep. Oh, oh, God. We got top threes. Yeah. So to start unveiling our top threes, we're going to start with our third choice. 
And to kick off the decision of how we're going to start showing them off, are we going to play rock, paper, scissors? Do we want to play, then you guys play, then the winners play? Or or we can play odds and evens. How do we do that? One or two fingers. And whoever, if it's an odd amount of people, they have to square off. If it's an even amount, they can square off that way type of thing. I haven't done that before, but sure. Okay, okay well, if everyone's <laughs> familiar with rock, paper, scissors, let's yep. just do it that way. Sure. So you two square off. Buster? No, you two. No, two. Okay. All, All right. right. All right. And? Come on, guys. All right. <laughs> so I guess I'm showing off first. I'm still showing off number three. So I've been waiting for this. <laughs> so anticipation. Why we're all intrigued. No Crooked River. Yep. No Crooked River. Uh, to start off, my third option is... The Spyderco Chaparral with Raffir Noble Scales. Okay, okay. Understandable. The main reason why this guy is one of my top choices here is the scales themselves. They are gorgeous, gorgeous. That uh, mesh. I think you should get yeah. that a little closer to the cam. Really, yeah, there you yeah. go, right in there. That's beautiful. Yeah, do it you, is. Do you want an offset light for that? No. No, no. Okay. Okay. It is copper and brass mesh infused in resin. Uh, using the CTSX HP for the steel. It is a nice performing steel. I haven't really used it too much to know exactly how long it lasts or anything like that, but for what I've done so far, I'm very pleased with it. The price. That is a very small knife that fits in your giant hand. It is. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it is a very comfy knife. If I'm back out of that front choil there, it's a very comfy little three-finger knife. If I'm up, I can just barely squeak my pinky on. That's what I'm saying. And it is It's a small grip. little knife. It is very in nice giant and mitts. very usable, and I greatly enjoy it. Thin blade, even mm -hmm. for a spider coat, which is greatly yeah. appreciated. Yeah, I know Shabazz usually harps again. on uh, the thinness of blades and all yeah. that, but I think that this was a very smart choice going yeah. that mm -hmm. thin. Grab the calipers out there. Yeah. Oh, good call. Yeah. Just, I was going to so oh, yeah, yeah. get at it. <laughs> so, yeah, up at the back of the spine, it's... Reading around 1.8. Up at the tip, it tapers down to like a 70. And then, hoping everyone can see that's still here. If not, they can hear you. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, it is a very thin, very slicey blade. And I do enjoy how it performs. That knife. I love the Spyderco double choil. Yeah, yeah. If it didn't have that double choil, I don't think I would like it as much. Uh, the versatility of the grip and the different positions yeah. you can hold it in, the f doing it full back, the front choil, a pinch grip. It's you know, you know part of that, why I like it so much. You know what the handle reminds me of? It's almost like those Christmassy type streamers. A little bit, like yeah. the kind of not as cheap looking yeah. as the streamers, but that same kind of aesthetic where they all layer together. What's interesting too is that this isn't like a pre-made pattern. They're actually, I'm not sure what the process is, but they're actually stirred up in a way where each handle scale is unique. Mm -hmm. yep, yeah, yeah. Everyone is different. Everyone will be an individual by itself, and that's part of my attraction to this knife. Is I went through a couple of them and found out. <laughs> I was gonna ask about just one. Yeah. No, Nigel being lefty, myself being lefty. We may have been biased on what he was looking at for the scales. Because we were buying it that Nigel would be flipping the pocket clip. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he was looking at the pocket clip sides rather than the show sides to actually get yeah. a, That one's nice on both sides, though. It, it is. is sexy. Yeah. You, picked, you picked a good, I did. A good iteration, <laughs> absolutely. That's the one complaint I can make is that because they are different, every once in a while you'll get one that on the one side is just not like it's, it's Yeah, good. it's so plain and like it's still got intrigue and interest to it, yeah. but... This one was just so captivating. What I like about the ones with the voids in them, where it's a lot of resin, you can see the skeletonized lines. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and you know what? it looks okay on that part, but when you grab a flashlight especially, and you put it under the glow of a flashlight, and all of a sudden you get the steel mm -hmm. liner just to glow underneath that resin, all yeah. of a sudden that see-through is not head. as boring yeah, as, as, indeed. as the mesh or whatever. Yeah, obviously right? it does come down to personal preference, and I do agree that being able to see the liner, and I don't think you really have any super clear voids that we could show. Maybe even not really. Not you got really. a ton of mesh in your yeah. Mesh. yeah, you really like lucked out. Too. I mean, like yeah. for, for people like us who like this sort of like, I don't know, the super inclusionary sort of scale set. Mm. I think it 
yeah, this this was a pretty solid pick. Yeah. And I'll say the XHP as well. I've got some pretty good at it. And people mm -hmm. call it the stainless D2 when you look at the steel charts. But I've been saying for a while now that it compares with S35. And there, I've heard a whole bunch of other reviewers starting to jump on that board and that cool. and you know, train as well. You know so. who agrees with you? Cold Steel. Yeah. Take a look what they did recently with yeah. the, the swap. The swip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's a, the swip. That's right. <laughs> the swip. It's all, about, swip. all about the swip. Kind of like a swift fur, but with a P. Anyway, <laughs> I get a small duster model. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess with them, and they didn't really change price points. They went from yeah. XHP to S35 so, and kept it pretty much across the board. And so. I, th I think that really tells you something about toughness with cold steel in terms of the two steels, which makes me think that, again, with CTS XHP, I don't know. I mean, if S35 is good enough for the Sebenza, I think CTS XHP, if you're going to have it as a comparative option, I think that's an excellent choice for an iPad. Yeah, it just doesn't have the crucible name behind it. And not yeah. saying that Carpenter is no slouch, like his Absolutely. Yeah, 204s and things like that, bd ones are awesome. But, it, yeah, Crucible sets the bar when it comes to the American forgery but type did, of thing, right? Well, like I mean, yeah. they're kind of first on the scene for a long period of time. And again, Carpenter doing what they do, I don't know that they have the same capacity, and I think, well, capacity for output, rather. And I think that's why they did the switch. But anyway, as far as this particular knife is concerned, or this particular steel, I can't think of many ways of improving it. So I, I definitely understand why it was your, uh, your number three. Yep. And just for the record, so we got some specs on it, because we didn't do that when we started. I don't we know if not. it lined up with the butt end there. I'm just throwing around not here, quite. guys. Pretty much there, yeah. So we've got three and a half inch handle, just over a three and a half inch handle. Yep, yep, just barely. With a... Well, two and three quarter inch cutting edge. If you hear it, like the yeah. finger choil counts for a lot, right? It does, yeah. Like so that's I mean, about a half inch choil. choil. You're looking at a three inch blade, but then you're looking at cutting it down from there when you're actually, yeah, yeah. Which isn't a bad thing. Like yeah. at the end of the day, what this knife is used for, that's still no. more than enough cutting it. Service, but, right? but for those who care about it, for whatever their legality is legally or locally rather, then that might be important. But it is definitely a smaller knife. And way yeah. so way more so down in the States than here in Canada. Absolutely. Because it's state to state and there's different laws across. So thankfully Canada's got some hinky laws and some of them we're not happy about. Ones. But right now we're happy that blade size isn't necessarily an issue. Indeed. Exactly. Right. So all right, number three. Are we starting going with me? Oh, we can yep. leave them up there. I was gonna think oh. I'd leave all four. Sure, sure. I'll just leave this up in the corner here so That'll it's out work. of the way. That'll work. And we can just line them all up. Sounds good. All right. So Dennis's number three choice. Number three, and man, I struggled. Uh, <laughs> Dennis had a rough time with this. The I roughest to, out of all of us, I'm I sure. Except for sure. Reevaluate my life choices <laughs> as well as my knife choices. I didn't really think about this until I want to say last night. Seriously. Uh, you know, yours, your knives. You I have hate a you. bit. I hate you so you much. have a bit more of a limited collection. You and Nigel. Well, I mean, you're more recently getting into this, but yeah. <laughs> All right, so number three on my part, I'm going Contigo. Nice. Right. It's it's a knife I love. Oh my god, I can't express I, the joy I get when I use. This surprises a me. I am so happy that you picked this because I was petitioning you to choose this. Deep carry pocket clip. M4 tool steel, re-profiled it to be a scalpel. If Nigel wants to show yeah. that, I don't mess around with my edges. I do them no, all by no. hand, and I make sure edges. they slice. Yeah. And M4 doing what it's doing, it's a pocket knife, so I'm not batoning with it. Even at the end of the day, I don't care about what abusive videos are out there saying I can baton with my Benchmade or don't <laughs> baton with my Benchmade because you break the access lock. I don't plan on batoning with my Benchmade. I just love the fact that the cutting power on this thing is ridiculous. Ridiculous with a piece of M4 and a grip that just fills me out in all sorts of good ways. Right? Yeah, a like lot it's... of other stuff we can baton with, anyways. Yep. We don't need something like this for batoning. Batoning wise, yeah. 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 I, mean, sure. I should say part of the hypothetical of us being limited to these particular knives is that fixed blades are still an option. So. Indeed. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and that's something we didn't go over at the beginning. Is in, in this world where we only get three pocket knives. <laughs> when I go camping, we're all still bringing kukris at the yeah. end of the day. But if I was told I had three pocket knives for the rest of my life, this is the choices that we get to make mm -hmm. right here. Right? And what so. a choice. I mean, in terms of toughness, I mean, you know that I've done some really stupid stuff with my, my Benchmade Atomass, and this is pretty similar in specs, a lot better. I don't know, man. The Contigo is one of those knives where I kind of regret not waiting for. <laughs> like, I'm going to be honest. When I first saw it, I was not, like, on board with this double finger choil, but it just locked you in. It's so nice. I think it's because of my hand size, but I just find it... 
just on the edge of awkward that I can't quite enjoy it fully. Is I don't it think. This? Is it this part for you? Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's what yeah, it's a little like. bit high because I like I feel that I'm rocking back and forth in there, mm. and they find and it odd. You don't find that the jumping really locks you in, like the internal. Um, There's some pretty aggressive. A little bit. But... Now on my particular one. I didn't do much on the back, but I did sand down a little bit right in there. When the Contigo comes out, it comes out for guys that are wearing gloves in some sort of military application, mm -hmm. in some sort of police duty. Most of the this time, yeah. This G10 is really aggressive. And I'm a civilian at the end of the day, <laughs> and I'm using it for cutting tasks, but I'm sometimes wearing gloves because this is my beater knife, but sometimes I'm not. And I did like it. And even without gloves, those two fingers lock me in absolutely fantastic. I have yep. no issue with where it locks me in place. And honestly, it came in number three because of just pure feeling I get when I use it. And the materials and the grip is awesome, but I feel like a four-year-old boy on Christmas <laughs> when I use a Contigo. And there is That's not a lot of knives that I can say that does that for me, yeah. right? So It's a special thing for sure. I mean, Benchmade does a hell of a job with uh, designs. Of, well, I guess Warren Osborne did a hell of a design. <laughs> Warren Osborne, he's, he's long live the king, man. Long yep. live the king. So as far as specs go, if someone wants to line that up, yeah, up on your tips. Just a sec. So we got basically a four-inch cutting blade right there. We're almost four on the nose. Now, most people aren't going to kind of carry a four-inch cutting blade. And honestly, in my day-to-day -day life, neither do I. Oh, well. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it is, it's big for a folding knife, though. Oh, it for, is. Yeah. For an EDC, three, three and a half inches, a normal EDC for most 100 people. 100%. Yeah. Under, even underneath this cloth, right? Yeah. Overall, what is it? Nine and a half? Sorry. Pulling it up preemptively there. Yeah, right, right yeah. about nine, nine and a half. half. For four inch, including so. the little... Spine. Oh, yeah, yeah, black class. So we're talking mm -hmm. about tungsten carbide window punches on there. Uh, the M4, I learned this just recently. Um, Benchmade does their S30B in-house. This is CPM M4. Mm -hmm. This is not just their in-house M4. They're actually oh. using a CPM so M4. So this is this from course. Crucible. You bet it is. Yes. And it's hardened from a 60 to, 62 to a 64. Nice. Of wow, Crucible that's awesome. M4. Hell yeah. Now, we know M4 isn't necessarily the toughest steel on the market. I mean, talk about 3Bs and Vanitas 4 Extras all day. But in terms of wear resistance for its toughness... At that hardness, and you know all about crucible powdered metallurgy, their whole process in making steels. Uh, this knife was just built to be a monstrous tank. Yeah, yeah and, and awesome for beating the crap out of. But even if you're just doing backyard, I'm cutting small branches. I'm doing a ton of cardboard. I'm doing day to day like backyard. You beat the crap out of this stuff. It it holds an edge forever. And there's not much really like there's not much really that is going to do better than that really in terms of ultimate edge holding for or its relative toughness. Now, it's a big knife. How it is a that, very big knife. How much does that thing weigh? Okay, so I have stats directly <laughs> off of Benchmade's website. We do have the scale here, so let's throw it down. I just want to compare what Benchmade says compared to what we say and see how accurate our scale is. We've got uh, 5.92 ounces. 5.81? Can't quite see because of the glare. No. That's saying 5.81. Maybe I haven't. Yep, yep. 5.81. How much did 5. you reprofile? 5.92. <laughs> I reprofiled the edge. I also said to the G10, but I didn't think well, like one of an edge. Still, maybe. I don't yeah. know, man. I mean, you can still maybe. see the grooves. Let's try okay. this. Maybe. No. no. Why? Now it's less. Why are you so off on your center? 5.8. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It said 5.92 on Benchmade's website. Okay. Now, 2012 is when this came out, which I was looking at some dates on when some of these potential knives came out, and we don't know <laughs> what everyone else has underneath the blankets. I don't it's know if surprise. we made that clear. I don't know what Joe has. I don't know what Nigel has. I just know what's in their collection. So I did some homework on all of your <laughs> sums of bitches collection. Because you're a dork like that. Yeah, I totally am. So I got some really cool stats here. Um, Contigo is actually Latin for either I protect or I conceal. 
And there is kind of a general running joke on the forums that no one's concealing this knife because oh. of how big it is. So. It's a deep carry clip. Yeah, it's a deep carry. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, okay, let's say you have a deep enough pocket. Look at how much is only being look how much is being exposed. Yeah, and yeah. we're going to dabble on deep carry later on in this conversation. I mean, it's not quite the same as Nigel's here, but it's... I think a little bit more would poke out on mine. Do you think so? Oh, I guess with that yeah. angle. Yeah, yep. yeah, the angle that it is. Yeah. yeah. So okay. the Antigo carries more <laughs> quietly than... Until so, so you sit down and it just like imprints. <laughs> Benchmade has yeah, some, right. some YouTube videos out of them destructive testing some of their knives from very old, like five, six, seven years ago. They've got some tests. They've got a test of the Congigo. They're batoning it through a piece of wood with a rubber mallet to see how much it can take. And when the guy nice. hammers it in, he's chunking off pieces of wood like this nice. with the edge as he's doing it. Wow. He does it with more than one knife, and there's, it's possible he's doing it with more than one knife, even under this counter, and it'll come up again on those ones. No damage, no flex, no nothing to the edge. He batons through that, wow. and he only does what a half of a piece of wood, but even still, ha crazy impressive. Have you dropped it on concrete? <laughs> I have not dropped this one open on concrete. <laughs> That's a good move. I guarantee you I've dropped it a couple times. I don't know when, but I guarantee you I've done it. Okay, That's so funny. lateral stress. They took the blade and they bent it like this type of thing. They yep. bent it to 145 pounds of torque. They didn't do a degree. They just did pounds of torque, and they did 145 pounds and then stressed it back. No damage to the edge, no damage to the access lock, no damage to the G10. Wow. Doing a lateral test this way. Yep, doing... <laughs> Now, they also did lock strength test down on the blade this way type of thing to see when it gave out. They did it on several models. This model took 1,132 pounds per square inch of downward pressure <laughs> on the spine to have that access lock. And it was a measure of pressure as soon as the machine felt Slip. release of pressure, it stopped and the test was over. Hmm. That's really cool. They did a similar test with a number of different knives. Um, you bet they did. Yeah, I watched several of them. Contigo was one of them. But like I said, it's possible that in this <laughs> pile, we will possible. be having this conversation again about another veteran. Maybe. So, Possibly. Bum, 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 bum. And I think that's about it. Other than the fact that because it's a tank and a half, 5.9, <laughs> like I said, it's not my dress slacks knife. It's not no. my five days a week knife. It's my beat the crap out of a knife. They skeletonize the liner, so if if you can check it out, I don't know if you can. I've got the V flash. Oh, I don't. Oh, it's okay. Here, go on moonlight mode if you can. Here's moonlight. Get into the liners there. I don't know if you can see any sort of skeletonizing on the liners. They did do skeletonizing on the it's liners. It's a fair amount of metal removed. So mm -hmm. yes, yeah, that liner. helped. God knows what it would be if. Uh, Probably seven. <laughs> yeah, it would, it would weigh like a Spartan or something. It is lighter than it looks, and I'm going to say that that's probably, honestly, one of the features that surprised me most the first time I ever picked it up. I think it's the balance more than the weight itself. Yeah, it's, it's a six ounce knife. What did I say? Sorry. But for the size. Yeah, six ounce knife, but when you put it in your hands, because the blade and the, the handle are nicely distributed on even weight, it doesn't feel heavy one way or another, right? Mm -hmm. So, all right, summed up number three for me. Number three for the Mr. Joseph, Iron Joe. I'm going to keep on calling him Iron Joe because I like it. Yeah, awesome. yeah. So. yeah, pretty happy with that name. <laughs> Follow me on Instagram. No. Uh, all right, so this is one that we previously discussed, talked about a little bit more. What ranking? Ah. Number three. So this is an oldie but a goldie for me. These... This is a grail knife for a god knows how many people. <laughs> a lot of people. And I'm sorry, guys, but I did end up polishing the front of that blade, and I will talk about that. This is the ZT05, what was that, the 560CBCF. 566. No, 56. It's got the number on it. Should be 560. 560. Is it a 560? Yeah, yeah. 566 oh, was the assisted, oh, wait, no, the 566 was the hinder slicer. Anyway, anyway this, 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 this no, no worries. <laughs> this particular one does come with a deep carry pocket clip, uh, carbon fiber that has been 3D sculpted on one side. 3D machine titanium on the other. Uh, titanium liner on the other side, not steel, which is interesting. At least I'm pretty sure. Anyway, um, I have really acidic skin. So when I sweat, I tend to take a bead blasted finish and cover it in tiny little pinpricks of rust. So I've, uh, when, after I got this knife, and this is when I was working warehouse jobs, so I had a little bit more money to spend on tools like this. Carried it a lot, loved it, started getting rust spots, thought, you know what, screw it, I want it to I want to keep carrying this and I don't want rust to be an issue. 
Defense a little bit off. I do need to send in for warranty once the whole kerfuffle at the border is. Well, and I'm not mm -hmm. even looking at detent. I'm looking at flippability without the detent. What's stopping it? But I guess it would increase the pressure. If the yeah, and that's and that's what it is. If you're traveling any other hinderer designs, my detent is off. But it, anyway, I've heard from another reviewer even after the detent got fixed, it was kind of a gummy knife, and you really had to kind of load up the button to. I'm I'm fairly proficient at opening it at, at this point. It probably takes a little yeah. bit of practice, but as far as this particular knife is concerned... That for, lightning bolt package. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Okay, can we talk about composite blades from yeah, Kirchhoff yeah, slash yeah, ZT? Yeah, sure we can. So S110V is the cutting steel for this, <laughs> and the body is Sandvik? You know, I haven't um, checked for a while, I but I think... No, the body is Sandvik. Yeah, sure. it which is. Sandvik? Yeah. I never... I 1428. It is 1428. Yeah, okay. you kept it because they had to the contract, contract because it's such a big yeah. supply of it. It would be stupid to go to 1227 or yeah. 1326. Now, to be fair, they've already expensive. got all this 1428 just sitting yeah. here that they want to use. Part right? of the thing is, too, um, 14C is a little bit harder to polish than 12C. 12C, you can get a nice, easy polish on it fairly quickly. Uh, S110V, I've sharpened this thing by hand once. I will never do that again. It is um, a pain. I will now only maintain it at its toothiest 4,000 grit edge off the Spyderco. Yep. What kind of weight have we got? Oh, not sure. Um, uh, let's, let's, yeah, because I, as far as reviews and specs, I did a whole, some homework. To my knowledge, this was a mid-year release for 2014. That sounds about right with the time frame. Is when I was looking at reviews, yeah. I couldn't find anything. I only found two oh, or three. Oh, in that case, let's weigh it. And I can't read it, so I'm going to have to have somebody else read that. 5.8. Same as the Contigo. Oh, wow. Okay. 5.85, wow. specifically. All right. Now, a little bit heavier than the Contigo. Maybe we'll do a video of this disassembled at some point, but there is some substantial milling on the inside of this handle, and half of it is carbon fiber. Well, I guess a quarter of it is carbon fiber, so you're not really worried about... That titanium scale is pretty dang thick, though. It okay. is. That's true. But That's the milling thick, is deep. But then look at the blade spine, too. Like, if we're looking at... Let's pull out some stuff. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I'll let Nigel do that. I love the lines of this knife. I love his cool lines. Yeah, as far as a hinderer goes, I'm hit and miss on the hinderer designs, but he did knock this one out of the park. If he had it on hinderer slicer drive, I think I would have liked it a little bit more. Especially the, with the slicer opposite. drive is sexy. Thinking about how... Now, I haven't ever damaged this knife. Thickness on those ones? Sorry, I didn't... Yeah. We were talking over top of... Yeah, uh... 3.98 up at the... Back of the spine. 3.98 mils? Yep. Okay. And 3.32. <laughs> Hit tapers. How a mil from yeah. spine to tip. <laughs> and you know what? That's kind of why I like if it. If you look at just overall, yeah, like crazy. It actually gets thicker towards the tip because of the swedge, actually. Well, uh, that, that's kind of, that's a bit of an illusion. I mean, yeah, the, the thickness will be continued all through on, through on that little blind line. <laughs> All um, through on. All through on. Anyway. <laughs> um, you know, I'm not... I like flipper knives, but I especially like this knife. Um, the idea, like, just having the thumb studs out of the way, the cutting path of the steel. Well, and ZT even mm. admits that the thumb studs are a dedicated stop pin. They're I was going to say, those are pin. definitely a stop pin. They, they, they even admitted on their own YouTube videos that those are stop pins. Those but you can still use them. Pins. Oh, yeah. In this particular you can really model. Get a yeah. Dig in, but... but... Yeah. Um, no, honestly, this was my number three because I couldn't think of anything I dislike about this knife. At least for me personally, for what I've used it for. This and is a first for me. Uh, yeah, you haven't ever played I, I've never played one of these, yeah. <laughs> As you can see. <laughs> don't, don't be afraid to put a little wrist flick into it. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Like I say, the uh, there we go. ZT needs to be played with. But... And God bless ZT. They actually, um, I contacted them. They said they were more than willing to replace or fix my detent. I told them, like, yeah, I did polish one half of the blade. Does that avoid my warranty? And he said, no, nah, as, as, as long as you didn't touch the lock bar. No, nope, yeah. definitely not. Um, as far as a user, um, I actually carried this for about four, four or five months straight while I was working in a plastic factory, actually, uh, making styrofoam. And cutting through straps, cardboard, all kinds of stuff pretty much every day, even shaving wood at one point, um, just out of pure boredom of nothing else. I was in the shipping department. It was a slow day. Yeah. Um, never had to sharpen it the entire time I worked there for that one summer. Uh, I, I went back uh, separate summers afterwards, but the edge holding on this is absolutely S unbelievable. S110 is amazing. 
And that's why I'm kind of happy that it's as thick as it is behind the edge and throughout the knife. I feel that if it were too thin, like we hear sometimes about Spyderco S110V knives, mm -hmm. if people are a little rough with them, sometimes they get a little bit damaged. I've never encountered an issue with this knife as far as edge holding. Didn't we have a mutual friend that you sharpened this exact knife? Not I, this exact knife, no, but no. another... Yeah, yeah. I mirror polished it up for him, and that took such a long time... Such a long time. You, never again? Never again on S10 no, or that's, S110. That's a big knife, man. It is. Like, I'm saying that having my Contigo be in I'm curious. Three, Let's but... take a look at the handles open. Yeah, yeah, I want to see them next to each other. Just pop this yeah, they're ruler in between. basically the same size. More or less. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing how heavy this knife is with all that carbon fiber and titanium in it. Yeah. Contigo is a little bit longer. But... Now, also, I'm guessing, what's the thickness of the handle? If you go to the full width of the contouring, it's probably thicker. Yeah. It's a beautiful knife. We'll have a Grail knife uh, episode, I'm sure, and I'm sure this one will come back for bigger conversations about Holy Grail knives, because there's a lot of people out there, and leave them in the comments if you're jealous of Joe, because I know yeah. I'm a little jealous of Joe, and I don't even like slippers. So. <laughs> Small apology for carrying it, guys, but I like it too much. Yeah, uh, don't. Use your knives. Use, Use your them. knives. Use yeah, exactly. Yep. Oh, uh, okay, so number three, for number three, I'm not sure what you guys are going to know of, what I have here or not, but... Uh, I got a ZT801. I was wondering Yay. if the 801 was... I know I put it in your ear. Oh, yeah. interesting. This is the LMAX version, isn't it? It sure is. Instead of the S35 versions that they yes. are now. Yeah. So it's a uh, LMAX blade, titanium handle. That titanium has been giving me absolute fits trying to get a decent color into. Uh, Paul does this anodizing. So oh, if anyone likes the anodizing, hit up Paul in his Instagram or whatever after the show's done, because... He's going to be doing some stuff for me, and we're going to be having some fun with it. This drove me nuts. I was up until 3 o'clock in the morning this morning getting this done so I could bring it in for the video yeah, today. It's, brother, it's, it's a color I haven't seen. Last time yep. they had like a sea foamy green aqua mm -hmm. color yep. going on. Right? You can so, still kind of see a little bit of a bluish down in some of the is recesses that, there. This is a different knife that I, I have in my... Do you like it? You have two you know what? No, my seafoam green one is my... 452. Oh, I'm aware. Yeah, yeah. But I thought you did this one. No. Oh, okay. I haven't done anything with this one yet. I, oh, really? It's been giving me fits every time I try and change the color on it. The You can't get the lock face. You, like the uh, the steel mm, lock bar. The lock it's face. it's so bent in and twisted. And, yeah. It won't come out. So it was giving me absolute fits trying to get a decent yeah. color on it. Now as far as... So we got how much overall? Uh, we're looking at just just under eight and a... Maybe like eight and a quarter? Eight yeah. and a half. Somewhere in there? Eight, yeah. eight and a quarter, okay. eight and a half. Somewhere in there. Uh, cutting um, edge of three and a half, just about yeah, yep. Yep. three and a half. So compared right to these tanky bad boys here, <laughs> well, right in that sweet this, spot. This is not as tanky apparently, <laughs> even though it's a fork of a knife. Yeah. It is all titanium. Tiny just oh, okay, and then yeah, and then, cool. and then there's my choice. The overachiever. <laughs> 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 to be and, fair, I mean they all. They, for the steels that are in these knives, I'm actually uh, pretty impressed with them. Hmm. But this yeah, is, still on Paul's choice here. This is not its final form. I, I'm liking the purple, though. I'm it's really nice purple. purple. I am enjoying it. Um, it's probably going to be a base color for the stuff that I'm going to do to it next. Now, Rexford Design. I didn't do a ton of homework on this guy, but I believe 2012. I'm not 100% sure, but I want to say... I'm going to take your word for it. <laughs> well. yeah. There's people watching the video now who are like, I'm having another tab open me. in Google. It's either 2012 or 2013, because I was watching way too many ZT videos here over the last couple of days, so it's one or the other, but I think it's 2012. Um, it sounds right, so we'll defer to your judgment on that. Yeah. yeah, and as these years are coming out on when the knives actually came out, it makes me feel old, because I've only thought I had them for a year. And it's, like, <laughs> right? it's been five years? <laughs> yeah. Now, this, so, one, this so, one I got on the secondary market. Which is why it doesn't have a clip on it right now. I, I do need to get a hold of ZT. I was about to ask about that. But for me, more importantly, I was going to ask you about the pivot. It's adjustable from both sides. Is it a free spinning pivot? It is. It's kind of a pain in the butt. I was going to ask how you felt about you that. You bring two torques to ladies and gentlemen. To be honest, I was able to, with steady pressure from my finger, get decent. Just on the other side. And just, just on the other one. side. Okay. Um, I think with a little bit of Loctite, you could probably get a decent um, lock up on it. But, yeah, if you're going to take it apart, you definitely need to have two torque wrenches. So, 
How is the nice horrible <laughs> rumors about ZT's LMAX, even though pretty much all of them are unsubstantiated? I've never really carried this knife. I bought this knife as as a flipper. I was planning on no clip, so yeah, tough. yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. I was I was planning on coloring it and putting it back on the market, um, and so I haven't really carried it all that much. Rumor has it that the second generation, whatever that means, second generation of the LMAX steel being made by or being treated by ZT, uh, did not have the chippiness issues that the first generation had. Um, for anyone I've talked to who's been using LMAX from ZT, they seem pretty happy with it. I've actually Would that heard, be the black wash versions? Or? I, I've actually sure. heard that the LMAX chippiness is actually a little bit of a conspiracy theory. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, I be some guy that was actually trying to hit the face, and apparently he like got totally insulted and like reprimanded from a whole bunch of people and exiled, and apparently lives in Australia now. <laughs> but it's some Random. guy that was this sounds like, like, a, like a fireside chat we need to have. <laughs> well, yeah. this is like tell me a story. This Dennis. is also Play forums. It was all on play forums. I about this guy that that was trying to badmouth the LMAX, and no one. It was always someone who who owned a ZT, who owned a ZT. That was, and there's a couple people on that thread that talk about the LMAX actually being chippy, but there's a lot of people that asked them about their sharpening, and they were putting them on belts and potentially detempering and heat treatment. So it might have actually even been the people that. Reportedly sharpening it on a belt system. More than yeah. it was the actual chippy you know, Max itself. So there's a little bit of this like reprofiling or something like that. Conspiracy going on when it comes to ZT's L Max, right? Like Yeah. So I mean regardless of what people think the truth is, I mean I definitely implore you pick up a ZT L Max and make a decision for yourself. But why yeah. why was this your number three? Um honestly it's my number three because it hasn't been in my pocket. I've only carried it a handful of times, so I can't really say this is the one that's going to be in my pocket every day, but it's gorgeous. Okay, after we expose what all three are, we'll come back to the why is this your number three, because that will give us more of an mm-hmm. idea of what's yeah. not in Reference your pile points. at that point in time, right? That's exactly it. So um, what was the weight? Did we get a weight on we this guy? We did not get a weight on this guy yet. Now, it's titanium, so it's as big and as it is, it shouldn't be too, too deep. Yes, but there is no internal milling. No, no, it's a tank. 5.6? Wow. Heck? What the <laughs> heck? So it's right in there with the big boys. <laughs> yeah. I actually expected but it to be, be a fair, little heavier. There's G10 and I carbon did. fiber in both of those, and yeah. there's nothing in I did. I expected it to be like five and a half type of, yeah. Oh, it's it's there. There. Maybe it's because of the smaller size. Well, maybe that, because I've played with it a bunch more. that as soon as you pull it out, I know kind of what she feels like already. So yeah. it's not like a ballpark guess. Five and a half, eh? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool little Purple's off. Yeah. 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 Oh, really good job. Great, yeah. great color. That... It should be blue. <laughs> it should be the color it is sitting on the table right now. According to the voltage that I ran through, it, it should have been should have been blue. Hey, I told you numerous times about this. It's a it, it's a constant back and forth, playing around, re-experimenting. That's exactly it. Yep. Yeah. I'm learning a lot of things, and it's a lot of fun. But so the new ones you get now, or are they discontinued completely? Because it's now got the T T I version well, out now. The, the, I'm not too sure. Remember. I think it might be. I think that's the case. Is the this, original 801s yes. and the 801 black wash got discontinued because now you can get the 801 Ti that's got the little windowy. You I want one of those too. To you're right. Recolor. Yeah. Um, and the new version actually has pivots similar to this guy, if I remember correctly. The octagonal. It has the octagonal, which is nice. Only adjustable for one side. Don't quote me on that, but I'm relatively certain that that's the case. But yes, as far as this. this particular knife is concerned. This was the very first Rex for Design knife that I got a hold of, and really, in terms of how it fits in my hand in a variety of grips, this made me interested in what Rexford was doing. Yeah, mm-hmm. he does really, uh, really nice designs. I mean, very boxy. They're not everybody's cup of tea, but yeah. for what it is. Well, and he's got a couple of smaller versions that he puts out as well. I can't remember if it's the Showtime. 909 or that. Well, the Showtime, but there is the smaller little Warncliffe one from ZT as well. That's the mirror oh, pivot, shoot. polished um, pivot, and isn't that a Rexford, or am I wrong? I, I am, could be wrong. I'm blanking on that knife entirely. It's a sexy little beast, but it reminds me of a mini I can't remember. Rexford. Anyway, yeah. um, everything we're going to dabble on with this bad boy, I yeah. think? Um, I think so. it, you'll hear from me in the future if uh, the LMAX 
gets chippy. Well, and as far as the top three goes, just looking at the materials, um, I got to carry something and rely on it for the rest of my life. Even that's though not, you don't have a lot of use, that's that ain't gonna break. No, no, it's it's a great choice. Titanium carbonized framework, which all the ZTs now are rock and carbonized steel. Oh, yours doesn't have one. Mine's old. <laughs> Mine's old. Mine's old. <laughs> I was gonna dabble on that carbonized steel insert, so, which you can see on the on the hole right no, there. they completely discontinued the 560 lineup. Um, but on all the new models, you're right, the new ZTs, even the tiny little uh, city pictures that just came out, they do have this nifty little That's become insert. a That's become a yeah, staple standard. on ZT's line. And it, and it makes sense. I mean, everybody was freaking out about titanium for the longest time. Chris Reeve has always done an excellent job with making sure his were carburized. But, I mean, that's Chris Reeve, of course. So when other people started figuring out it was needed... Hmm, maybe it's easier to just put a stainless steel insert. I gotta be honest, I still question how much it's actually needed. I think guys were mm -hmm. ranting for the sake of ranting. Now, there were some forums. Well, that were like, I mean, geez, keep in mind people like to really reef on their knives and whack them open as say, hard as yeah, they can. Well, These are the up. people that are gonna run into problems. I mean, yeah. for for the average user and for people like us who know how to treat their tools properly, I don't know that you're really gonna run into problems. And I mean, that of course, you know, you can open them as hard as you like sometimes, but. I think, I don't know, I, I still think it was a move in the right direction. ZT bills themselves as this super high-end, well, high-end production, hard-use sort of pocket knife co company, right? And mil military themed. So having that little bit of, oh, if it ever wears out, I mean, it's steel on steel. Yeah, it's never, built it's, like a tank yeah, kind of yeah, it's is like, right on their box. If, right? it ever so. breaks, if it ever breaks, you can repair it. I mean, it probably won't ever break. I'm just saying. When you're talking built like a tank, how is that not still built like a tank? I've said this it about many jump. other. Uh, I've said this about S35 as well. If it's good enough for Chris Reef, it's good enough for me. Yeah. Right, like and heavily know. carried too, right? Oh, absolutely. So. I, honestly, I haven't noticed any lock wear here. I'm not saying I would turn down a ZT if I saw it, but I think it's a nice addition. Um, and it's kind of funny that we see this evolution of where ZT has been going over the years. Mm -hmm. continue the, to see. For the sure. only thing that I complain about with ZT knives is I don't like the way that they mill out their locks. I'd prefer that to be on the inside of the knife. Just me. I prefer it as well. Just, just a, me. Just as From an aesthetic. As, yes, and that's the only reason why. Yeah, 100%. It's just a It's a little bit nicer aesthetic if it's on the inside. Well, I mean, this it didn't stop me from buying this knife. And it won't stop me from buying the ZTs in the future. I love them. For sure. Mm -hmm. They are probably my favorite as far as, like, production folders go. So, Paul's number two choice was... I mean, you guys should know this. It's the PPT. It has not left my pocket since I bought it. It is a nice option for sure. I uh, I love it so far. This is the 2018? 2018 sprint run. Sprint run. Yeah. Sprint run. It's the S90 uh, with. Yeah. I want to say it's marbled carbon fiber, but I might be wrong there. I think that's what they called it in the description. It's I, gorgeous. I honestly think it's normal carbon fiber that they 3D milled with this. Tops calls it a Rocky Mountain grip. I, I like that description of it because that makes sense when I look at it. I think it. you're yeah. right. If you look super carefully along the edge of the carbon fiber, you can actually see fairly regular looking layers. Marble okay. carbon I'm, fiber yeah, normally has a bit sense. of like a weird mishmash. That makes sense. Yeah. Either that way, my eyes. it's gorgeous. It's just, and it's, I don't care. Oh, it's beautiful. No, no, no. It yeah. catches light in all sorts of great ways. And then it's S90 for the blade. S90. And S90 is no slouch no. when it comes to steel. It's like some we, of the hardest steel on the planet. We were talking about edge holding, and we were talking about the S110V from my previous knife. S90 is like so much in the same ballpark. Like it's, it's insane. Mm -hmm. And as far as like a sprint run is concerned, I think this is a great iteration of this design. It came absolutely, absolutely razor sharp. I did a little bit of a strop on it just because. And uh, after that, it got super sharp. Put your money where your mouth is. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. All right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's yep. after you carrying it for a couple of weeks, using it in the warehouse, using it at our cardboard boxes. Board. Yeah, you bet. Yep. S90V nice. is a yeah. monster for edge holding. Yeah. It's a tank. And you haven't done much to it when it comes to it. Finger flicks. Okay, so... Being lefties, we yeah. got a comment. You guys, as your righties, have your nice, beautiful thumb opening, and you can fluff it open, and my wrist hurts, so I don't want to do that that much. But, you know, yeah. it's, yeah, as far as the lefties goes, we get the finger flick. And when it comes to the finger flick, I love finger flicking spideys as a lefty, oh, right? It is like satisfying. It's, yeah. I can say without much ego that I'm not bad at opening spider spidercos. 
Oh, oh. but I'll screw it up from time to time. That's it right. is you comfortable. Right -handed. You've you, got enough purchase on you, the backside? You do, but for me, I'm digging the fat of my finger in there. So it is definitely a little bit more uncomfortable to do. But, I mean, as far as the grip, once it's open, that jimping. You know, I never knew, I never really understood why this model was discontinued. If the Yojimbo could make it, why didn't the PPG? It's so pretty. Mm -hmm. To be um, honest, and yeah, like you were saying, just because I got to. Um, at the end of the day, it pops open every time I want to spite you flick it. There's enough there you that I can get on. You got your finger flick on it right-handed, no problem. No problem. Interesting. That's yeah. very interesting. I spidey flick really easily on everything that I pick up, so... There's a lot of Spyderco designs that are excellent for that. That's exactly yeah. it. They're, they know, Spydercos might look ugly to some, but they are very ergonomic in hand. And as yes. far as that ugly look goes, this doesn't have that same kind of leafy blade shape that a lot of them do. And so it, I like that blade shape even more. I was just going to say, how do you feel about that like sub-worn cliff with a little bit of belly? Like, How do you like that? I've been calling it kind of like a sax blade, and it's I really, really, really enjoy it. Very much a sax style blade. Yeah. Yeah. I want a sax fixed blade, so... Now, as far as grip goes... I've got a major hot spot right there where this is supposed to catch probably your second finger on most. My finger wants to rest right Is that because you're left-handed, maybe? I don't, I don't have the same issue. Try with your right hand. I'm curious. But really chill no, out. No, it's still there. there. It's still there. Really? Now, I was trying not to show that <laughs> off too much, right? But Absolutely. yeah, yeah. Um, with the left hand, yeah, it's in the same spot where it's right hmm. on that nook. And that's why I just can't fall in love compared to a Yojimbo. And the Yojimbo has a much more boring handle. It's not anything to look at. That blade shape does not do anything for me. No, it's the uh, it's mm. an ugly spider coat the is. Yojimbo. But the PPT's got flash. It's got style to it. But it has more of a hot spot there for you, me at least. You know yeah. what? I think I would agree. And actually, when this was first released with S30V and G10, um, it was down between this and the spider coat Zulu. And I picked up the Zulu because of for me, my hands, it felt better uh, for the type for the typical types of grips. This hasn't really changed all that much, but it is a lot more attractive with the S S90 and, and the carbon fiber and for sure. And, and for I me, I, I've, I've turned on to that type of style. For me, I don't well. get that hot spot because my fingers go in between it. It is small enough to get in. Yeah, I got right? small and hands. Nigel, yeah. you're probably big enough to get past that point. Um, or... It's still weirdly awkward, but if I keep my index finger back a little bit rather than wrapping around fully, I can tuck in enough that it's not too bad of a hot spot. But it's a pretty specific grip that yes. makes it not a hot spot. Yeah. Now, right? yeah. specific yeah. grips. One of the designers, Fred Heron, <laughs> he's pretty no, he's pretty well known for his uh, particular uh, French-made yeah, knives, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Go back on the handle like that, and it gets yeah. nice and it's fighty. Not the most intuitive to grab and find a comfy spot for it. That's it's, better for me. Yeah. For sure, that's better for me. Is when I'm choking back and not using the yep. like and that that becomes much much quicker in the hand. That's exactly for sure. it. Like it's yeah, it's it much more pistol. More, it feels more yojimbo y and what's yeah. funny, with that type of grip. What, what's funny sure. is that um, I just noticed you were actually focusing on this secondary section of jimping along the back rather than the fore section. Like, By choking back. You've got two sections of maybe yeah. I mean I, it's obviously going to depend on your size of hand and what you're doing. But, but even still, yeah. I, um, but I very much appreciate the fact that I do have jimping for both holes. Mm -hmm. We got specs. What do we got, boys? Uh, for cutting edge, just under three, maybe like two and three quarter. Yeah, I'd say two and uh, three quarter. Blade overall, all the way to the edge. So it keeps it under three that three inch blade limit. I and like a sharp blade. Seven and a quarter? Seven, closer to seven. Yeah, 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 a little bit over seven and a quarter, I'd say. So you got yeah. ten inches of the lanyard? <laughs> <laughs> ten you know, I don't know that this knife no, really we were, needs a lanyard. We were talking it about chopping with the lanyard for the yeah, last yeah. video. So maybe yeah. that's for the chopping ability, right? That's like, it. Yeah. It, You're going to chop up the S90B. <laughs> yeah, okay, all right. The tip like that, I mean, okay. Yeah, and it's not, a whole you lot. don't need, <laughs> absolutely need the uh, the lanyard on it, but with a deep carry clip, I kind of like them. Mm -hmm. As long as it's small enough and it's not okay, obtrusive. Carry, and we're got, yeah, pretty deep carry screws on the, the top, deepest. so it doesn't even get in the way when it comes to screws yeah. trying to put it in and out of your pocket. It's up on here. Yeah. Non-reversible. Non-reversible. No. They did not right machine handed. this side for me and Nigel because they hate me and Nigel. You know what's weird, they though? They just hate us. us. They just hate us, but I'll still finger flick their knife. <laughs> There's fun. not too many spider codes. Well, maybe I should bite my tongue there, but from memory, there's not too many spider codes that are strictly right-handed. 
Although there are a number like the uh, like the Zulu, which Depends are right-handed on many, only, but tip up or tip down. Depends mm-hmm. on how many years you go back to, because in the late yeah. 90s, early 2000s, everyone loved their tip-down carry for some messed yeah. up reason. Windows. And as soon as you got into the 2008-2010 period, all of a sudden people were like, wait a second, <laughs> this it's is how it better be. to draw it this way. <laughs> like, it's better yeah. in every so, way. And I know for most of our viewers, this is going to be very polarizing in terms <laughs> of uh, who's going to be watching us from now on, but <sighs> talking about the clip, in all honesty, by far my favorite clip on any knife I have. Really? Nice. It is fantastic. It is a spring clip. It's got just enough tension to hold the pocket. It's not aggressive. It's easy to slide in, and <clears> if you want to, if you're like wearing... A more delicate pair of pants, like a dress pant or something like that, you can hold the clip and slide it in super comfortably. Yeah, yeah. I've done that with a number of knives actually. It's a nice little feature when the tension isn't so high. Yeah. You know? But I've never had it slip in my pocket or anything else like that. That's not bad. That's not bad. And as That's far it, as yeah. clip design yeah. goes, I think that was a pretty smart move. I really do like the fact that it comes right off the side <laughs> of that knife. Here. A little yeah. bit easier to see on this I side. I like here. that design with the over the top, but it's super easy to mill the other side and just oh, yeah, yeah. ignore. It's, it's a yeah. millimeter. 40%, yeah. I don't know what percentage and, and you, I don't know, they hate us. You, you, you can, even, ex- you can yeah. even extend the pocket clip so it matches the other side of the scale so that there's no lost space. Yeah. It would yeah. have been nice to yeah, see you something like that. a straight line across. Now then you would have to say, oh, well then the pocket clip wouldn't have that delicate sweep. But like, so what? Give it a straight pocket clip. Make yeah. it so that left-handed it, people it, can carry it. It is definitely worth it. It's so good, right? And the positive click that Spider Coast Tai Chung factory yes. has on their uh, like liner locks and frame locks, they're fantastic. That's it. And at the end of the day, this one, out of the box. I haven't touched the pivot. I haven't done anything with it. It is a little bit tight, and I actually like it that way. <laughs> yeah, you do. Um, <laughs> is that what we're saying about that? That's, that's all we're saying good, about that. That's a good awesome. place to Indeed. end off on. Yeah. I think that is very much. Oh shoot! That that means first first. Oh no! Number two for Joe. Okay, my Let's number two. See what he has. And you guys see it coming, but I wonder how many of the viewers will recognize Spyco Phoenix. Yeah, we knew that. Was it coming, is an let's be honest here. odd little one that hasn't been around for quite a while from them, for sure. It is such a weird looking knife. <laughs> Howard, Howard Vale, Howard Vale design. No, yeah. I I will say that oh, that's supposed to be a brighter purple, but I mean like I I have uh, finger oils all over that thing, so it's a little bit dimmer. I did add it as a titanium purple. Here, here, we titanium. got a schmutz cloth. Oh, okay. It's been named from the last episode. Schmutz. So it's the schmutz, the schmutz cloth. Off. If it's worth showing off. Show it off a little bit. It's yeah. Oh, that might take a little bit more. Yeah, you <laughs> usually need like oil or something. or something. Yeah, but you know what? That's okay. Um, you can play with it down there. I've got some oils over here. Once we might trying. might return to it. But um, as far as the as far as the design for the knife, honestly, this was actually so my very first knife story time. Very minor story time. Very first knife I got that was considered any kind of a good knife was the Spyderco Delica. And I got this in Montreal, and we were sitting around one day. I'm like, you know what, Spyderco, I've never heard of this company. I wonder what else they do, thinking they do more than knives. No, they mostly do knives, but getting into it, I saw a picture for this, and this was the first knife I saw online where I was like, holy crap, I need to own this. I need it in my life. And it was the only knife up till now, I think, where I've picked one up. I'm like, this is exactly what I thought it would be. This is amazing. I then bought it, kept it, and it's... I don't care if it's only VG10. I mean, like comparatively speaking to a lot of the different. Yeah, I don't like to, I don't like to mess around with the pivot too much because if uh, the screw gets messed up, I can't really replace it. It has been discontinued for fourteen years. That's and, a while. And I've heard mm-hmm. I did a little bit of homework on, on this bad boy too. I've heard it's on two sets of springs. Uh, yes, the, I've actually disassembled this knife once to anodize it. There are two sets. There's an exterior and an interior. That's I'm not, really weird. It is super cool. Yeah. I love this knife. And then the ball bearing is actually a free-floating ball bearing. Yes, that yes. That when you is. squeeze it, you feel it turn in your hand and yeah. stuff like that, so it doesn't wear down in the same area when it locks in place. It is weird. It is. So I almost equate this to a Derringer pistol, the way it feels in my hand. Uh, maybe slightly off of my Derringer, but <laughs> but I really the design is what keeps it around in my collection. And this was one of those knives, like when the challenge was first issued, like you you can only have these three. Period. It's like, well, I don't think I could ever get rid of this knife. Yeah. And when I you're talking myself. about when next, oh, I didn't cut myself. Oh, oh, ha! Paper towels. No, I'm good. No, no. Okay. I have a first aid kit, but <laughs> I you can't even see it. Like I barely. All right. All right. 
just the just the skinniest of the tip. It's such a weird knife. And Howard Bale apparently the three holes symbolize the god of war, Japanese god of war. Stop it along the pocket clip as well. So he's got that theme oh, going on with this thing. Speaking of righty only, sorry guys. Um, <laughs> really? Yeah. I didn't even know it's, it it's old enough that they only milled in Bastards. the uh yeah. Although white bicarta. I don't see it that very often on pocket knives and I very I, I I can't remember any other spider code that uses it offhand. The white micarta. Yeah. yeah. There, there was another Howard Bell design that may have used it, but <laughs> no, he I think the other ones he had the spider code at least were like black G tap. And just I thought there was a white I thought there was a white micarta in anyway. I'm not sure. yeah, regardless, yeah. as far as this knife is concerned, I don't have anything like it in my collection aside from this. I know the polywog exists, but as far as the way this feels and for the very minimal amounts that I've actually used it, I've only ever touched this up with the 8,000 grit Spyderco, the, the white stone, yeah. fine, and uh, <laughs> stropping. And that has been more than enough to keep the BG-10 like razor sharp. I am going to say right yeah, now, it's, 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 yeah, it's, it. it's, it's going to be top three, if not the most top unique looking knife. Yes. Out of all of this collection, I, yep. it's gonna give everyone a run for it. It's gonna sound like I'm hating, and I'm not, because I've actually learned a lot of things that gives me a lot more like interest in this knife. Just having this discussion, for sure. But my um, initial impression when I first saw it was oh, somebody took a gas station special and put some fancier materials into it. You're, <laughs> you're not wrong, and it does have a very weird appearance, and it does yep. look like something. Like, what the hell's that? You know what I mean? But, but honestly, you get your thumb in there and you get yeah, down on it's, it. it's yeah, it's decent. Push, push, push cut. It locks in. Like, it it's locks in good. One of those like knives it's... that looks so ugly that until you start using it and feeling it in hand, you won't like it. Yeah. Sort of thing, unless you, you know, instantly that ball like bearing it. is weird, though, yeah. when you squeeze it. I've actually it. owned two of these up to this point. Uh, this is the older version. I'm planning on buying back the other one from a friend. This is a knife that, yeah, I'll probably have a double of again, because I can't I can't bear to get rid of it. I just love it too much. Does yeah. it hang off your hand, Nigel? No, no. Well, if I go up into the forge foil there, it is... Plenty. Wonderful grip, like it is super comfortable. If I'm back out, I don't think it was ever mentioned. Yeah, no. there. and yeah. I think I think that would be for all of us. Mm -hmm. I think it would be. I think I think it is less comfortable at that point. What do we got on the specs here? And grab the scale while you're at it, there, Paul. Sure. We're at seven, just over seven and a half. Oh, actually, no, just under seven and a half. Yeah, just under. Under, and what's the cutting edge plus the blade length? Cutting edge is. That's about two and a two half. Oh, 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 holy cow. And I got a pump that I've got hanging out of my belt. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see, what is this? That's just about three inches from tip to bolster. So, yep. hey, if you guys can find one, it's legal in a lot of places. But, um, yeah. And I'll, it's it's, what's it's that? What's not that a lot of cutting length, but it gives you a super secure oh, grip. So I mean, you let it you let it slide through. Yeah, no, and I don't think anyone ever expected you to have it in that grip. Mm -hmm. What's your way? What's what's this tank weigh? Four, four point one three. Wow. Yeah. That's not that bad. No. no what no. was the PPT? Did we weigh the PPT? Oh shoot, no, we oh, didn't. I don't think we did. Let's Sauce do that corona. quickly. Get out of the way. For the number two choices. Let's, let's do it this way. Yeah, that's smarter. Yeah. Four point eight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Solid steel. Yeah. This guy's steel. Titanium, but there is a steel backspacer. What I found interesting too. And the titanium's too. pretty thin too. And you, you guys. Look at how thin that is. Well, I wonder if. People might be able to see. Oh no, it's completely blocked off. Mm -hmm. uh, the plunge actually goes into this machined steel part, which actually kind of loops around. Yes, it does, yeah. It, actually, <laughs> this was probably the most fun I've ever had disassembling a pocket knife. Yes. Like, it was we might have to do a disassembly oh. video because mm -hmm. of how unique it is. But I wouldn't mind doing that. If you guys have some other options you might want to toss in, and like we can do a multiple disassembly video. Or just a shorter video. We can yeah, do yeah, that for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not hating. It is weird. That's it been is so weird. Weird. No, I um I was very hard pressed to not consider this for my collection, even given I have stuff like S35, D2, S110. <laughs> really hard, but I mean, VG10, I don't know. I, I can't get rid of it. It's a nice little knife for sure. Nostalgia and, and, and a sentimental yeah. value, had, that's a big part of it. I yes. had an option to buy your second one and I didn't take it. I'm <laughs> kind of kicking myself now after this conversation. How do you know a little more about it? Yeah. And how unique the. When everything. I first saw it, I was like, mm, no, I'm good. <laughs> I still Sorry, say Joe. it kind of had black polished 
mm-hmm. uh, G10 well, or Black Horse, my card instead of the white. That yeah. would have been the as maybe I more like my the personal white. preference. Yeah. Been, yeah, and I would have been black. Well, I, I mean, would have been Johnny Cash in that album. Yes. yes, you know what? Yeah, She's making it a Mother of Pearl and make me happy. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. That, that's what actually, I want. Actually, Mother of Pearl. Now, if you could get like a G10 frame with a with a Mother of Pearl inlay in the center, hell yeah, I would that's think about time. that. But anyway, on a final note, modifications would be fairly easy just because they're flat scales. I've taken them off. They're nothing super complicated. They're easy to modify yeah. if you wanted to. The worst part about it would be getting the milling in there, but I mean, you have a router, a CNC. You modify CNC, something yeah. that's been out of production for 13 years? I, al- I already anodized it. You can, you can kiss Touché. you want to. Touché. It, it gives I, you joy. I shouldn't be saying anything about changing the color of things. If it gives you joy, it doesn't matter what other people say, do it. Mm-hmm. Like it's, yeah.